Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to look at something that's not very different, but it's very, you know, interesting. Um, so in the last tutorial, we converted, you know, made a binary tree from a bit of some data inputs and, you know, and printed it out as an in-order, pre-order, and post-order list of, in basically arrays. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is basically do the opposite. We're going to have an in-order and pre-order array, and we're going to convert it into a binary tree, which is going to be fun. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do is basically, you know, this is basically the function which I'm going to use. I'll just finish that off over there. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do in here is basically make a class. First, our normal, you know, the class which you always make, the node. Class, node. And uh, in here, we're going to have char values this time, char data. I mean, always we have, we always have int values. So this time we're going to have chars, right, and node, left. And then we're going to have a constructor, node. And obviously the constructor is going to have a bit of, you know, data. So char data. Which you're going to pass in later on uh, while we make the, you know, the actual program stuff. This is just the container. And then in here we're going to have, um, this dot data is equal to data because we're going to pass it through the constructor into the actual class. This dot write will be equal to null. I know Java, you know, implicitly does that, but I like to explicitly do it equal to null. That's done and that's taken care of. This is basically the in order function. I'm going to do this, like take care of this later. Don't worry about it. Let's look at the main focus thing over here. So what is the main principle behind creating a binary tree from an in order and a pre order list. So just let's just look at the pre order list for a while. So in the pre order list, we start off with a and as you know that when we do the pre order, uh, let's just take this as an example. When we do the pre order, this is in order, but when we do the pre order, we have this value at the first. So we're going to start with the root printed out and then we're going to go to everything else, the left and the right. So in here, we're going to start with this a. And then we're going to go inside the in order array and then we're going to check where a is. We're going to return the index and then pass recursively this value and this value. And then we're going to check for b. b is over here. So in this whole value, b is the root. Okay, and in this, obviously, the one which comes first, c is the root and c is attached to f. And that's so on and so forth. Let's just see the implementation and get a better feel for it. So we go node, root. We obviously have the root at the start. Because you know, you can see root over here. So root binary tree generator. And in here we're gonna pass a few things. We're gonna pass in in order, pre-order, zero, and in order dot length minus one. Now this function is not created yet, so let's just create it. And we're gonna make this a private public, you know just for fun sake and delete all this. And in here we're gonna return node. The, the node is not created yet, but it will be, don't worry about it. And we're gonna change i to in start index start or index end. Index end, e and d. Okay, that's done. So what is the first thing we're gonna put? So suppose we put some values zero and length in this particular function and we get in start is greater than in end. So we can't have that, right? So we go if uh, in start is greater than in end. Okay, if that is the case, then what happens is basically return null because I don't want that to happen. I don't want in start to be greater than in end because it will mess with the whole you know logic of the thing. So after that, let's create this particular node which we're going to return. So we're going to go node node equal to new node as always and in here we're going to have a few things uh before going to what i'm going to put in here let's tell you something else so in order to keep track of which index i'm go going through i don't want to make a variable exactly in here because every time i execute this it's going to get initialized inside here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a static prefix right over here see this one static int pre index equal to zero this is going to act as a counter for counting through every single element of the array. So that's already made. So it's not necessary to do it again. Just write static int pre index equals zero. 
initialize it, no worries. So in here we're going to say in order free index plus plus. Now this is post incrementation. So what is going to happen is if the free index is zero initially, in order of zero is going to be passed. And then after this line has been executed completely, it's going to increment. Or at least after this particular value has been passed, it's going to increment. So don't worry about that. Don't mess up. Come on, man. If the next thing which we're going to do is we're going to check if in start is equal to equal to in end. Now, if this is the case, well, you have actually reached the end and I don't think you need to go any further. Just return the node. Return node anyway. But there are a few other things. Now, if this happens, it probably means that you're either at a leaf or at the end of a particular thing. And it basically means that you're probably at F or at C. Because C is one end is probably not the best thing. So that's what it means basically. So if that is the case, either way, just return it. So if you don't understand this, I'll encourage you to take a piece of paper, take this binary tree and actually form it using this function. Let me just complete the tutorial and then you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Now, if this does not happen, if in start is not, e is not equal to in end, then something must happen, right? So what happens is basically you go mm, node dot left is equal to binary tree generator copy paste and the same thing copy paste change this to right r i g h t right and uh, over here binary generator in order in order okay now what happens is basically not really required because you're going to pass in same things i don't think so you need something else you need some other parameters. You can't pass in the same parameters. It's redundant, it's redundant and ridiculous. So let's find the new index. So what is the essence of this particular algorithm? You're going to have A and you're going to search for it in this array. So let's search for it. Int index equal to search for that particular index. And in here, you're going to pass in in order. Now, I know, you know, you might feel that this is too abstract or, you know, it's not required. It's very weird. And you know, you'll understand it, don't worry, just give it some time. Just give it time. And you pass in node.data. So why am I doing this? Because I want the index where A is basically in here. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So I need 3 to be returned from this function. Okay, so I'm gonna pass in the in order, that is the in order thing. I'm gonna pass in the start, the end, and the node data. So I'm gonna make this function. I'm going to name it public, P-U-B-L-I-C, and uh, return zero is probably the best thing that can happen to me. And for int i equal to zero, i is less than or equal to in int. Um, maybe zero is not a particular option because, you know, if you have zero and you pass, in it, pass it in after a, you know, this is not zero, obviously. So the index, that, the index of f is not zero. So. You probably should not have zero in there. So I equal to in start. Sorry, not here, here. In start. Okay, in end I plus plus. Okay, and then you're gonna have what? If basically if I that is in order of I is equal to equal to data, then return i so that's the index right this is the index which you return this index basically so you got it right you got the index good great whatever and then you come over here you have the index and what you're going to do with it you're going to pass it in here in start to index minus one and index plus one to an end and that's it. That's what you do. You have minus one plus one and you ignore the actual index. So you ignore the A, you get this value to be passed in, this value to be passed in, and recursively, you get the answer. And that's about it. So in order to see what you have done, you just take this off. In order root, probably not the most, you know, I should probably create that. Oh, it's already created over here. Control shift C and it's done in order. So let's just print it out. 
and see if it runs. And yeah, see, D, B, E, A, F, C, D, B, E, A, F, C, in order. So that's about it. I think I should probably go over it one more time, just to, you know, give it just, it's fun, you know, this, this program is really fun. So yeah, at the first you have the pre-index. What is it? It is a counter. It's gonna keep track of the pre-order counters. The node root, binary tree generator, in order pre-order zero, in order of length. This is probably gonna be the recursive function which actually generates the whole binary tree. In order root, this is probably gonna print it. Not probably, it is gonna print it. There's no probability over here involved. There's no probability. And the actual binary tree generator, so you have in order coming in, a pre-order coming in. You don't have to, you know, in some of the programs which other people do, they probably cut them. Like in Python, if you do, there's an easy function to cut the in order and pre-order, you know, break the array. But in Java, I don't know, this is probably the most easy thing I can do to explain it out. So if in start is greater than in end, obviously that is not something you want, then you return a null. This is just a base case. New node, new node pre-index plus plus after this pre-index happens it's getting it gets incremented in points to the next one that happens if it's equal return the node do not go to anything else int index search in order start because if it is equal to end just return the node because obviously there is no left and right <laughs> that's it so int index it will search for the uh, possibility of a in here and then return what it found if it didn't find anything it will return a zero even that's good. I can use, I can work with the zero because then it'll be in start and zero. So start will be zero, end will be zero. There's no possible thing. Uh, yeah, that could be a very nice uh, exercise. Just do it. You'll know, find it useful. So yeah, and the note over here. That's about it. Um, thanks for watching. It's been a fun experience making this video tutorial. So yeah. See you later, Gators.